Hi everyone. A few days ago, I posted this video on LinkedIn about how a caterpillar can go, transform into a butterfly. Now this particular video uh, might look a bit funny, but that's because it was generated using stable diffusion animation. And in this video, I'm going to cover how I used Replicate and how we can use Replicate with Bubble, host our own models and come up with some interesting app scenarios. Uh, let's see how it goes. So uh, before actually cracking on, uh, it takes hours to make this video. So I'd really appreciate if you like it. Thanks. Okay, so first of all, we're going to open replicate.com. Uh, why replicate? The reason being it's, uh, I mean, you've got ChatGPT, OpenAI, Stable Diffusion, and their own kind of internal places where this stuff can happen. Uh, but if you have, there is a, a large variety of open source models. Uh, now, what do you do with an open source model? You can run it locally or you can run it in the cloud. And Replicate is one of those services where you can run a model in the cloud. Uh, and there are loads and loads of interesting models, uh, audio generation, uh, language uh, models like uh, ChatGPT or other language models, Llama as well, uh, upscaling, text to image, uh, video models as well. So this, in this video, particularly, we're going to look at video models. And within video models, there's many of them. So within video models, the one I used was stable diffusion animation, this particular one. So the way it works, if you give it a starting prompt and an ending prompt, uh, it will generate a video. So it will generate the first frame and the last frame, and it will generate the frames in the middle as well. And there's loads of parameters that you can tune here as well. Okay. So in terms of how to run it, you can play around with this on the kind of dashboard web UI as well. Uh, but how to run it using Bubble? Uh, we can. We have the API. Okay, uh, HTTP here. So it can get a little bit confusing how this prompt structure happens. Uh, but let me just switch to where's the API doc. So you've got the API token here. I'm not going to open it. And you've got the docs here. And then from in the docs, you can look at the HTTP API as a reference. So you've got authentication. Uh, standard token space some token. I think that's my token. I'm gonna have to rotate it now after this video. Yeah, this is my personal token. Yeah, so I have to rotate it now. Okay. Uh, the main API call. So because you can uh, host a large number of models, so this the API call is generic. Uh, you can create a prediction that just adds your prediction in the queue, and you have to select the model hash. Uh, so if I pick some random, I don't know, speaker transition. Uh, this model hash, that's the one that we need to pass it here to the gen uh, the prediction endpoint. Now, the inputs, this JSON body, this is whatever each uh, model expects. So each model will expect something different. This particular speaker transition model will expect an audio file and a prompt, uh, the one we were looking at uh, for the video. Oops, where did you go? And videos animation. So the one we want, it it, it kind of like relies on many different uh, prompt parameters. So we've got the prediction, then we can, uh, we get an ID. Okay, in brief summary, we get an ID and we can continuously poll the ID itself uh, when it's done, when it's starting, when it's done, and then when, the, when it's done, it kind of returns the result as well. Okay, or we can use what we call webhooks as well. Webhooks are easier in the sense that it's just kind of pings back bubble uh, that, okay, I'm done because this can take four or five minutes. Uh, video generation can definitely take much, much longer as well. Okay. And then when you want to get an, an initial, a single prediction, you have to use this endpoint. So let's switch over to our bubble editor now, and I'm going to go over these API calls one by one. So we've got stability AI was covered in the previous video. Uh, in this one, we've got the replicate, so private key and header, authorization, token, space, that token string. I need to change this. And uh, get list of predictions. So that's an easy kind of like starting point uh, for an API reference, which is just getting one prediction is this one, getting list of, yeah, list of predictions. So I always like using a get API call. It's easy rather than a post. So just run a get API call. Does it work? Does it not work? How does it work? So if I reinitialize this, it shows me all the various generations I've done in the past. Now, one trick I've learned while working with Replicate is that using this get API call, 
I can easily get my input JSON. Okay, so if I'm on the dashboard trying to work with stable diffusion animation, I was like, okay, width this, height this, uh, some prompt strength animation frames, number of interpolation. If I've got this tuned nicely and the prompt, I can run a generation here, run a generation from here. In fact, let me just show it live. A small caterpillar a small green butterfly in fact let me just elaborate green caterpillar a small red butterfly so if i submit it from the front end it's gonna start and if i now run this get prediction here the first one here a small red butterfly a small green caterpillar so this now this json it's so much easier that okay it's depending on which model it is it's figured it out like, kind of like i can just use this i can call the prediction endpoint and i can just use this input json if i had to pick a completely different model as well i could just go run same thing run a different model and then kind of like uh run this let's just run it so submit and if i look at the prediction endpoint again uh, the get list of prediction endpoint again i can easily get Okay, so this input structure is a bit different here uh, and the output structure is different here as well. So th that that's too much of a segue into replicate itself. So one step at a time, we've got, what we want to do is run a stable diffusion animation. So it's the same prediction endpoint, but the version that we're passing, it's here, CA1F, here, CA1FE, this one, that's the latest. You could run the old version if you want. Uh, so, and after that, uh, the input, you can, of course, add like uh, these brackets to all of these parameters. But for the purpose of the tutorial, I was like, okay, I'll just take the prompt start and prompt end. Uh, webhooks, uh, we've asked, uh, we have set up a webhook here. Uh, it's this bubbleapps.io version URL here. So if you don't know what webhooks are, it's how other servers can ping bubble when done. So for example, Stripe will return a webhook when a checkout happened or a subscription is canceled. So you can configure webhooks in backend workflows here. And if I can, uh, like, how do I describe it? If I click detect data, I can make a new endpoint. Okay, replicate webhook. I can click detect data and then it opens this type of window. And if, if a webhook comes on the initialize endpoint, it'll automatically fetch the JSON. I've already done that. So it's actually, it already knows that this is the structure of the webhook here. Now keep in mind, this is the structure of the uh, video animation webhook that I was running, not the other model. So depending on which model, you may want to change the endpoint uh, for whichever model you're using. So, okay plugin input version test live for webhook prompt start a sapling in the ground prompt end a small plant in the ground now in terms of front end pretty straightforward nothing complicated uh we just like make any at the moment it's just like an input prompt an ending prompt and a generate button uh, this is just internal some stuff in the database i like, like keeping around as his status is done of his status is not done so this in this prompt i was trying a small caterpillar a small butterfly and it just turned it into the number of frames is different compared to the linkedin video so it generates a bit differently uh, but overall it does kind of work uh, in terms of the generate button uh, pretty straightforward just run a stable diffusion animation. You can tune these easily. Uh, I create a database entry, uh, which has the prediction ID. Uh, and just to keep a nice like start end and OS status processing as well. So if I submit something, in fact, this, I'll just click generate here. So that's a new entry in the database. It's processing in the replicate dash. I should have left that page open. And now, and now the only way I can access it, I think it's from the dashboard and my recent prediction. No, uh, it's still running. So see, it took four minutes. That that web API I had done, uh, a small red butterfly, a small green caterpillar. It it's it, it's taken. This is the video that just got generated. 
Yeah, pretty neat. It started with a small green caterpillar and ended with a small red butterfly. Pretty neat. Uh, and if I wanted to take exactly this uh, prediction again, this one failed. So one thing I've noticed is, <laughs> I don't know why and how, the NSFW, uh, not safe for work content filter is pretty ha harsh. I mean, all I did was like, what, a caterpillar and a butterfly. And somehow it's like, nah, NSFW content detected, try a different prompt or a different seed. Uh, so something strange, some, it does glitch sometimes. Uh, but overall, yeah, uh, we can, let me see. So we can click, a, what was it, a small green caterpillar, a small red butterfly generate. And we just have to wait until if, if it clears the NSFW filter. Uh, there must be some ways I haven't explored fully. If you know how to kind of not bypass it, but uh, how this goes wrong, uh, let me know in the comments below. Uh, but in terms of web hooks, uh, what happens is an API call is gonna come here after four minutes or five minutes. So two of our models are running now, two of our API calls are running now. So one of them is an interesting a small red butterfly, a small green caterpillar, and the other is a small plant in the ground, a sapling in the ground. So it depends, let's see how, how it turns out. Uh, in terms of the rest of the editor, there's not much here. There's just, uh, I think, a HTML5 plugin. Yeah, a video player because we generate an MP4 file. So just install an HTML5 video player. And uh, the database, the video generations, uh, just keep input start and done processing the video URL, the video file, this actually needs to be deleted. So it's the video URL and the replicate prediction ID. One interesting point to note, uh, the replicate uh, video is deleted after like 24 or 48 hours. So if you are, if you're gonna keep the video, uh, just make sure you download it somehow. And that could be, let's see, it's, it's running, it's running. It can take up to like, four minutes to generate a video. So the last one was generated in four minutes and this one should be hopefully be done soon. If our webhook comes along, uh, if you want to see the webhook, let's try and have a look. Show advanced request API workflow response request and see it. Nope, not here yet. So one of our video is done now. So this one took 5.1 minutes. So the webhook should have arrived here now. If I search two minutes ago, two minutes ago, logs can take a while sometimes. Yeah, here it is. So replicate webhook. Uh, I thought it should have showed me the whole uh, API JSON as well that came through. Ah, here it is. Request for API workflow. So that's what came back. Okay, and that's the whole log of the kind of inference generation. That's the video URL. And uh, our webhook is simple. It just like finds that video generation uh, and updates the video URL here. Make sure you expose it as a public and authentication and ignore privacy rules. Uh, I mean, you should strengthen it, but that's something for the tutorial. Search for it and request re output OS status done, create a new log. So what does it look like? Let's see. Ooh, that's pretty slow. Oh, I think the parameter, uh, it's a two and a half minute video. I have a feeling the uh, JSON we passed maybe uh, may have made some mistake here. These are tunable stuff. So frames, 50, 25 steps, five, something here. I think I mixed up film interpolation, uh, but yeah. Okay, so let's see. Is it going to turn into something more than that? Very slowly, very slowly. Not much, not much, to be honest, not much. Uh, what about the other one? It's still running. Okay, let's wait. Hey, so this prediction is ready as well now. Uh, before we see it, uh, I'd really appreciate if you subscribe to the channel as well. Okay, let's go and look at it. So that's a caterpillar. And it's slowly, oh, it jumped quite a bit. Ah, here it is. That's the magic shot. And 
slowly it's like okay now I'm gonna just transform as a butterfly was it not supposed to be red ah slowly becoming red slowly becoming yeah 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 let me just speed this up I think yeah and it's gonna become turn into a red butterfly slowly taking shape taking shape taking shape and that's it now i think we're gonna yeah we're gonna be going in reverse now okay but yeah so if you appreciate stuff like this i'd appreciate if you like subscribe and comment and uh, just fyi i do run a bubble agency and uh, if you want us to build something like this for you uh, get in touch happy to help thanks bye